Hi, my name is Dan Kimpel, and I teach a course here at MI called Networking in the Music Business that covers the subject of presenting yourself, making an impression, and how to meet people who can help your career. Here's one technique from the class that I think is especially important. As music business people, we tend to want to do business with people with whom we share specific interests and traits. When we're meeting others at a club, a conference, or whatever, it's easy to tell who might be a potential business partner. But out in the real world, how do you make an impression and attract others to you, make them want to talk to you, and best yet, create a scenario where you might be able to work together? I always encourage my students to create a visual identity for themselves. Sometimes it's as simple as just wearing a music business t-shirt, a cap, or another item of clothing or jewelry that immediately identifies the wearer as a fellow musician. Sometimes it's a more subtle gesture. The next time you're out at a coffee house or waiting for a bus at the airport, try putting a music magazine out in front of you so others can observe it and have a reason to talk to you. Networking is a technique that you have to practice, and in many ways, it's exactly like learning a musical instrument. So it's doubtful that if you picked up a guitar, you could shred on cue. And conversational skills are exactly the same. You can start practicing when you're waiting in line, you're getting on an elevator, or out at a party. You start by making eye contact, by smiling, and by making yourself approachable. Positive people respond to positive energies. So being upbeat and entertaining in conversation will generally attract others to you. You can begin any conversation by asking a general question like, what are you listening to that I should know about? This is an easy conversation starter. Small talk, sure, but an effective icebreaker just the same. And conversation is like a tennis ball being volleyed back and forth across the net. Effective conversationalists know how to keep the conversation flying. And initiating it is considered a very positive trait. Asking for advice is a surefire way to extend a conversation. But conversation shouldn't be about someone, even in a group of close friends. Because if somebody talks bad about another person in public, they'll probably badmouth you as well. So no matter how tempted you might be to pass on a cutting remark, keep in mind it never reflects on anyone other than the person who made it. A great method for working a room is to seek out people who are standing alone. Introduce yourself, find out why they're attending the event, and then offer to introduce them to someone who they might want to meet. Remember, if you walk into a room and you're only there to take, people will pick up on that. But if you're a person who gives, it's very easy for others to give to you in return. I learned this next lesson the hard way. If five people are in conversation, feel free to join them. Four people, sure, walk right up. Three, no problem. But beware, if two people are engrossed in conversation, unless you know them well, it is never permissible to intrude. Odds are they're discussing something private, maybe even you. There are rarely regrets for what's not been said. The people who speak easily often communicate too much, but somebody who doesn't speak at all doesn't add to the party. In conversation, it's best to aim for the middle. No one to listen, but no one to carry. And in ending a conversation, use exit lines, because not only do you have to say hello, you have to say goodbye. And an exit line will help you say goodbye gracefully and leave on a positive note. Don't strive for cleverness, just be sincere. You can simply say, it's been nice talking to you, good to see you, I hope to see you again, or my personal favorite, I'm going to go work the room. If so inclined, shake hands goodbye or place your hand lightly on the other person's shoulder because this conveys sincerity. Remembering names is difficult for many people, so be sure to say the person's name back to them when you meet, use it regularly in conversation, and burn it into your memory with some form of association, preferably something visual. The more you see and hear the name, the more likely it is to sink in. Also, you can make notes in your notepad for later reference. To attract others to you, here are 11 surefire traits to have. First, a great but not an overbearing sense of humor. Number two, good manners. Three, confidence. Number four, a non-threatening appearance. Number five, smiling and eye contact. Number six, start a conversation. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Next is knowledge about the subjects at hand. Also knowing when to let go, not taking yourself too seriously, fearlessness, and respect for cultural differences. 
Be aware of the power of body language and what it communicates because 80% of communication is nonverbal. So keep your body language open, look directly at the other person, and be real. I hope these techniques are helpful to you, and I'll see you at Musicians Institute in Hollywood. I'm Dan Kimpel. Stay positive.